Soup Times is on a mission to create dope content that entertains, educates, and informs. Bean Soup Times is on a mission to create dope content that entertains, educates, and empowers the black community. We keep our ear to the ground, we ask, we report to you. We help black people to share their message. We promote real dialogue. We provide a platform to help give voice to the voiceless. We educate you on how to shop smart. Our passion is to inform you about black events, businesses, organizations and entertainers we are black owned we are black chicago we are the award-winning being sue times Sean Michelle's Homemade Ice Cream is the only place to go when the ladies crave delicious, old-fashioned, homemade ice cream. Their vanilla tastes just like Grandma used to make it. With over 35 flavors, all made with the freshest ingredients, Kathy has never had banana pudding ice cream this good. It's homemade ice cream the way you remember, and Sean Michelle's doesn't upset your stomach. Enjoy in store or take it to go. Sean Michelle's, fall in love again. First time customers, buy one, get one free. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Assalamu alaikum. My brothers and my sisters, man, I am so pleased to see you all virtually, for you all to see me virtually. Man, we have a wonderful show today. I know some of y'all are excited about the guests that we have on the day, and I am excited as well. So, man, as we continue to shake and move, um man we we going back hold on excuse me one second let me grab this off of here we are um man just doing what we do so first of all welcome to the tori muhammad show i hope everyone is is having a great day today i hope you're encouraged i hope you're focused i hope you're determined and i hope you know that man as long as god is for you nobody can be against you um this is our day this is our time man so i'm so excited again to be doing this show and to bring you all some amazing and incredible people. And right before I bring him on, you know, my morning reflections, my morning thoughts, um, I like to share with you all. And so I was up actually pretty late uh, last night, this morning, slash, you know, those of us who um, here in Chicago, who are members of the Nation of Islam, we you know, oftentimes we'll make sure that our properties are safe and secure at all hours of the night. So as I was um, making some rounds to last night, I was in deep reflection and it came from a conversation with a brother who was talking about why he hasn't been seen in a while. Right. And he talked about uh, some struggles that he had with an individual. And because of his inability to solve the, the conflict with the individual. And I mean, we're talking about something that's very, really very uh, uh, minute in the big scheme of things, right? But when we come from certain places and certain positions in life, uh, even something as little as $10, right? Can be a hang up for some people. Uh, could be a misstep um, in terms of judging someone's character. So he talked about that problem and that disagreement and how, you know, it wasn't solved properly. So he, you know, left. And, you know, I had to ask him the question. Now, this is I'm using the Nation of Islam in this example, but this is for anybody who's striving to be godlike. This is anybody who's striving to be in an environment where people are striving to be better. If you came to an organization or a church or a mosque because of the mission of that church and mosque uh, or that organization that is uplifting black people, then if you have a disagreement with somebody and you understand the context in which black folks are now existing and living, which is we have been robbed of name, language, culture, religion, and God, we have become other than ourselves, and now we need to come to a place to heal, 
right? So if you are in a position where both of you are coming to heal and you get into a disagreement and you leave, then what did you come there for, right? Part of the healing process is that you stay in the process. So for to leave the process and, and it because of an individual, then you must not have came for the right reason or you forgot the reason that you came. If you came to struggle to be one with your creator and to learn and study and grow, you know, if you go to a classroom and you're trying to listen to the teacher and people in the classroom start acting up, you don't leave the classroom and never come back, right? You left the process and then you didn't get what you came there to get. You let somebody else take you off your square. So brothers and sisters, whatever square that you own today, if you're striving to uplift yourself and if you're striving to uplift your community don't leave because of petty differences with each other it's time for us man especially with your family with your friends man clear up all those misconceptions and uh disagreements so that we can be about the business of coming together uh to unite uh sister Sh shia said true true we appreciate you sister but anyway man but i don't want to keep talking man because Man, this brother I got right here coming on the show, man. Um, man, I've been knowing this brother for a long time. We've had uh, conversations uh, many days. We have uh, been in the field soldiering together. I helped him to um, crystal, not crystallize, but to put on paper uh, a incredible monumental book uh, that he wrote teaching the FOI how to be fishermen of men and how to move the final call newspaper. So some of you all know him from various aspects of life. Some of you all may know him as a top hip hop um, uh, freestylist and songwriter. Some of you know him as a soldier for Muhammad. Um, man, wherever he go, he get accolades and awards because that's just how God made him. So let's bring on go. My brother Hashim Redeem Hakeem. That's my Lakeham. Well, Lakeham alive. What's going on, Coach? <laughs> man, we shaking and moving, man. We shaking and moving. First of all, let me say this, brother. We we go back for sure before any of us that had either one of us had children. And I gotta tell the story for those who are listening on how we met. Because you and the, um, Brother Damon, which I'm going to have on later this week, was like the Good Samaritan. <laughs> 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 Me and some brothers were traveling to Chicago from Atlanta. And, you know, this is, we, we were kind of students, right? So we had someone rent a car, because I don't think any of us was old enough to actually rent a car. <laughs> and the brother who rented the car for us did not travel with us. So... I was hitting it, man. I was doing about 80 in Indiana. If anybody know Indiana, you know, you learn. Do the speed limit in Indiana. The state troopers going to catch you. <laughs> no problems in Georgia. No problems in uh, Tennessee. But Indianapolis, Indiana, boy, they're going to catch you. So they stopped us, saw that the person who rented the car was not in the vehicle, even though we had the brother call the rental company to confirm that he allowed us to drive the car without him they, they took the car from us and drove us to a nearby hotel motel holiday inn <laughs> and then left us there in somewhere in indiana and we called brother he at the time minister james general james aziz and he sent you and brother damon to come get us off the side of the road <laughs> And that's how we met, man. And um, and I've appreciated you from that day forward. <laughs> We're talking 91, 92, somewhere around there. <laughs> man, God, uh, <laughs> I can't remember that story. But so many people have come to me and tell me things about my past, told me things, memories that you just shared with me. And I need them to help me jog, man. I, I, I hope it ain't that I'm getting old. It's just I done went through so much in my life, man. But I vaguely remember that. 
and I know you are an upstanding brother. So first, I want to give it back to you, man, and say you have been an example since I've known you. Some people change. Some people uh, are fickle in the way that they are and the way that they handle you, man. But I've never known you in my whole 30 plus years of knowing you for for no, for being an under the table, behind the back, slick, surreptitious type of brother. I've never known that of you. I don't even got one bad memory with you, to be honest. <laughs> now, somebody that I don't know that long, I don't rub shoulders the wrong way with somebody, but I can't say that about you. So that goes to speak about your character because I know I can get under people's skin. And I do want to thank you for uh, helping me put my first book together called The Path. Um, that the, the, the Man, you've just been a, a help me in so many ways for many of us in the Nation of Islam. I just say that you have helped us meet our goals on so many levels. So that goes to say that you are an upstanding brother, man, and you're pretty consistent. I just want to thank you. And thank you for having me on this show. Man, Allahu Akbar, man. It's a pleasure, man. And, and man, it's, it's a wonderful brotherhood that we have that we can meet and connect and grow um, in this path of doing the work. So, man, talk a little bit about that Final Call newspaper and why you wrote the book, The Path, and what did it help? Come on. Come on. That's why I keep that paper closed, baby. <laughs> Coronavirus. The crisis strikes America. So, I'll say this, man, and I, I was just talking to Minister Aziz, formerly too hard a brother um, James that many of us knew as brother James 2X. I was just speaking with him, and he does what you just did. He reminds me of so many things, and I just act like I remember. And if he keeps talking, <laughs> I'll remember. <laughs> and um, I remember when we were on the west side of Chicago, and when we, fir when we first – I first met them in Indianapolis. So I, I got registered in Chicago, as many people know. Um, or if you didn't know, my registration started in Chicago. I'm from the rural suburbs of Chicago, Aurora, Illinois. And that's a great journey, but that's a whole nother story. But I got registered and I was a, a very zealous young FOI, like when most of us were when we first came in. You could do all, of, we did everything. Fasting was not hard. Stopping whatever habits we had was not hard. We were just so excited about the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the way Islam was articulated, I'll say, by those in leadership at that time, in particular, the former editor-in-chief, Brother Abdul Wali, um, and of course, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Dr. Khaled. Um, certain ones, man, we just, you cannot touch us when it comes to debating, and I was not able to debate the Muslims and win as a Christian. And so I had to bow down and submit, and I came on in. So I got registered in 94, but I have to say my training did not start until the former Supreme Captain, Student Minister Abdul Sharif, um, sent me to Indianapolis. Shout out to Brother Darrell and Brother Thaddeus, the first officer at that time. But they shot me to uh, Indianapolis, and uh, where I met Brother Nuri before he was in any leadership. And uh, Brother Student Minister Jeffrey used to be the minister in Indianapolis. And he was a student minister there. And so there was a rap group called X Niggas. And I kept hearing about them. At that time, they they um they were on some they were on a vacation, I'll say. But anyway, um <laughs> I, I, I I I met Brother Damon and we battled verse for verse. I was the first rapper in the city of Aurora, Illinois. And uh, I got into hip hop because of my love for nursery rhymes and how the teachers would teach with rhymes and that, that that's how i got into hip-hop anyway and so when rap came out beat street and break it came out i was like oh man i could do that and uh that's i i naturally picked up the gift but every time i would rap man i just used to move crowds i used to play the dozens with rap in high school uh i would be losing in the dozens battle but when i started rapping i would checkmate them and they had to tap out but I normally, I never run into competition until I met Brother Damon. And I met Brother Damon in Indianapolis on Sherman Drive in the parking lot. And this brother was able to go verse for verse with me. And I'm like, man, this verse for verse, unlimited verses. And I had, 
And one thing, when I run out of verses, I can freestyle. And he still was able to keep up with me. <laughs> and I said, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I just had to dap him up. I don't think I lost. I don't think he lost. I just had to dap him up. You good. And I ended up joining the group X Niggas. And I'll have to say that even though I registered in 94 prior to meeting Minister Aziz um, and Brother Damon, my training really didn't start until I got with Minister Aziz because he was an intricate, he think on a whole nother level, as you will know. He think on a he think on a whole nother level. His vision is so 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 far, and even though we think we see, certain people in leadership can see a little bit further. And uh, like Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad, another one that they just got, and the Supreme Captain, where they just we've been around for a while. That things we think we should know is just certain things that leadership, in particular, the Supreme, the Assistant Supreme, Minister Aziz, of course, Minister Farrakhan. They can see a lot further than that. So uh, my training kicked in then, and I'm, I'm sure that's because Minister Aziz, being an intricate part of the E-team at the time when Minister Farrakhan was able to grasp that wisdom that he had then. So my journey started in 94, and I started out right, right on the battlefield as a processor, but I started out right on the battlefield. I mean, holding down the projects in Rockwell Garden, being held hostage, um, all kind of things going on that I was like, man, I joined because I wanted to be a Muslim, but I didn't know I was going to be saving lives and shut right. down projects and, con Hell, and convert. I didn't hear that story. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, whenever you're ready for it, I don't know what we talk about <laughs> right now, but I know uh, <laughs> whatever you're ready for. But yeah, I was held hostage at Rockwell Garden. It was a big thing. And, um, I'm just excited about the Nation of Islam because as in the military, the army says, be all you can be. But you can't really be all you can be without God as your foundation. In fact, Tupac said life as a rap star is nothing without God. I would say life without the Nation of Islam <laughs> is nothing without without the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is taught to us by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. So I've been able to travel this whole nation with, with that one gift on teaching brothers how to handle brothers, how to handle people, how to how to deal with confrontations, just teaching and training brothers how to handle one another, in particular dealing with the Final Call newspaper in the streets with our people. So it's been a journey for me. And, uh, man, as we continue to go through this interview, I feel like I'm born again by the ABM yes, tribe. So let's go. Let's go. Man, man let's a lot of wag by, man. Man, I appreciate this, man. And, man, definitely... Man, props to General Aziz, man, student minister, because I was from the West, I was from the South Side, but, you know, I used to come over there on the West Side a lot because of him encouraging me, and I remember him letting me open up for the lectures, and he would be on the way. He would, man, go, you know, do, do, do 10 minutes, man, do 10 minutes, open up. Man, I go practice, I'm studying, I'm, I'm, I'm sweating, I'm nervous. I do those 10 minutes opening up and he don't show up. He wait, he come in 20 minutes and now I'm sitting up there, I'm just trying to, just, just trying to keep stuff going. And then he come in and he feel the spirit and he just sit down. Mm. <laughs> I'm looking at him with the eyes sleep, like what you doing? <laughs> like, oh, go, oh, keep going. And man, I would carry the whole lesson. He he taught me that I knew how to, I had to get the gas, you know, mm -hmm. on, the, on a different mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. I knew I had some, you know, some small talk, but man, he he, he, he pulled a lot out of me, man, with that on the on the job training. So man, I appreciate him. And I know as as you all work together, there was a lot that came out of that. So man, over the years. <laughs> You know, I'm going I'm to start at the end, and I want you to kind of keep walking us through this. Okay. There are a lot of FOI. There are a lot of dedicated brothers who are doing the work. We are here with the Final Call newspaper on a consistent basis. Here go one of them. process brother right here. Man, assalamu alaikum, sir. Go ahead. See, 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 that's what I'm talking about right there. So we are a culture icon 
as represented by a brother out there with that final call. And of course, mm -hmm. in the first turn, the Muhammad speaks to be recognized as the brother over the what past 40 years, if I'm correct, has sold the most final call newspaper. Man, what 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 keep you? Because again, we all understand this mission to different levels, and we all say that we are committed. But to be consistent out there with the people, taking the good with the bad, the people that love you to be out there, the people that want to spit at your face, right? And be consistent for 40 years. Man, what drove you and what keeps you driving today? Because I see you still shaking and moving like that. For example, you got a process in the college. I got to go all the way back to the beginning. And these were my first lieutenants, Brother Tyrone, uh, Brother, both Brother Tyrone, Brother Tyrone, Big Brother Tyrone, that we know that did so much time in the prison. Um, other brothers, man, as I said, I was in, I'm from rural Illinois, man where I was often the, the only black person in the classroom. So I was definitely whitewashed. So to go to the nation of Islam was a culture shock. I was so proud about the environment, just to be in the environment in the nation of Islam. And believers have to not underestimate our environment. We can't underestimate just the way we have been taught to dress. We can't underestimate the power of a brother in a suit and bow tie, a sister in a headpiece, a sister ordered, a sister dignified, a brother in order, a brother dignified. We can't underestimate our presence. And just the presence of the nation of Islam, when I came in, was so firm, so strict, so loving, so in order that I was always on the edge of my seat, like, what's next? What do I do next? What can I learn next? What's next? I was always that person. But when they put the final call in my hand, it was, it was a bit much for me. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it was a bit much. I had a speech impediment. I used to stutter. I used to... And I didn't want to mess up. And then on top of that, to go, and I had low self-esteem. I was not as articulate Unless I was rapping, man. For some reason, in a regular conversation, I couldn't hold one that way. But when I was rapping, wow, man, I do that thing. But then to take a final call newspaper and then go up to somebody and tell them, hey, listen, this is the way, it was a challenge for me. I didn't know how to handle rejection well. So the first few no's, I was questioning, am I supposed to be in the nation of Islam? Like you was just talking about that brother in the beginning about $10. I was questioning if I got to be doing this to be a Muslim. I don't know. I don't know if this is what I'm about to be doing. And so Brother Tyrone, um, his name is Kyle Abad now on Facebook, Tyrone 3X, came. Now, a person was asking for the final call. That's when it was a dollar. And the person in the car, I was on the curb, was waving to me. I want one. And I'm, man, I'm not going on all them cars, man. I'm not doing that. And I said, brother, I said, brother, they, they, that, that person wanted paper. He said, give it to him. I'm like, man, he, he noticed the fear of me. Brother Tyrone came and grabbed me, told me to shadow him. And when I heard what he was saying, I'm like, man, dude, this ain't that hard, man. This ain't what I, this ain't what I think. And so I challenged my fear. And in that instance of challenging my fear and overcoming that difficulty and that fear of rejection, it's like a child that learns how to tie their shoe for the first time. It's like a child playing basketball and they make their first shot playing basketball. That excitement of accomplishing something when I was afraid, that excitement got into me. I'm like, oh, it's it. It's it. It's over with. And I kept doing it over and over and over again and over and over and over again from, from I probably want to say from 1990, 91 processing. No, no, 19... No, 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 no. 89, because I had a stint in prison. 89. Then getting out 93. I was a Sunni Muslim by the time they got me in prison. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it was a, well, I'm going to just, there's so many stories I got to tell one day, but, but I'm going to keep it focused. I overcame my challenge. 
And from that, I wanted to be the best at it. Like I was in hip hop. And I transferred that energy from hip hop to distributing the final call. And then I met a brother named Brother Khalil. Yes, May sir. Allah be pleased with Brother Khalil. Um, this brother was in his 70s at the time, and he was the number one final call salesman. They're trying to get your attention. Uh, final car salesman in the nation. And I'm like, what? So Minister Aziz got in my ear. He's like, listen, Brother Hashim, we got to have our number one on the west side too. And he gave me the prep talk. He hyped me up. <laughs> it was over with, man. It was over with. And, and then they had a competition one time where I think the minister gave away a car um, for who could sell the most final cars. Brother Khalil got it. I thought it was some politics in it. But it's not a, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a I got under his, his, his tutelage and Brother Khalil taught me something about consistency. He said he, he is who he is because he's consistent. And he said a lot of people contribute to the nation of Islam. He said his way of devotion was the final call newspaper. And that's how it got to me. And understanding why he did it, and I got to say this, I want to give a shout out to Brother Glenn, the assistant to the assistant supreme, to, and the supreme captain, Brother Glenn, uh, to the supreme grandmaster Anthony Muhammad, who helped fashion me in so many ways. I want to give a shout out to all of them. But if it was not for Brother Khalil going to Allah, Brother Khalil would have got that award at Savior's Day, and I was just next up. So really. It's a tribute to him, and if it's a tribute to him, because he really yes, was the one that got the award. I was just next up, and I just I want to let that be clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, Allahu Akbar. Man, well, that's a powerful one-two punch, man. And of course, <laughs> many of us know the example that he set. Um, man, there's so many things you're saying, brother, that's making me have a a wealth of questions, but. Talk a little bit about the how you how you did your music, and I know you're still doing songwriting and things today. But I'm gonna tell you, man, for a young FOI battling the things that we were battling coming into the nation of Islam and not having music other than Public Enemy that gave us something where we could bop to, but still vibrate on the level that we were striving for. Man, XN, y'all, y'all were it. You know, I still to this day, it usually happens if I'm driving. That's usually the time when I can get keyed in and get a little angry, right? <laughs> Somebody do something stupid when they when I'm driving. And I put in my head, it, 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 it comes to my head real easy. Negroes around the way got me tripping I again. Get <laughs> I my head, but I can get it again. <laughs> and they just calm me down. <laughs> that's, a, that's a true story. And a lot of people think because we've joined the Nation of Islam and we've learned to hide our power. And now we are trying to be in the classroom where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us and stresses for us to rise above emotion into the thinking of God. Come on. One of our characteristics of being an FOI is humility. And sometimes we, I know I did, often mistake humility for being soft or, or weak. But we understand humility to mean, listen, what you just said, these Negroes round my way got me tempted again. I done put down my AK, but I can get it again. Like the incredible Hulk, Bill Bixby, you don't you don't want to see you don't want to you don't want to see me when I'm angry. So right. let's let's just take this and have deliberative dialogue. Let's take this to peaceful discourse. So I, I will say that has always been my challenge, man, in my upbringing, having a a, a mother. I really want to say my both parents had the hot heads. I, I got that. <laughs> and then what has happened to us as a people um, mm -hmm. and been passed down from generation to generation. I'm talking about post-traumatic slave syndrome and how we have been oppressed 
ever since we stepped foot on this soil. That's yes, in sir. all of our people. And so when we have been taught those same people that are suffering from post-traumatic slave syndrome like you, Brother Hashim, you got to go save them. You got to go get them people and bring them to where you was changed and where you were saved at. So we got to go to the whole house. We done been in, I done been in drug houses while they selling the drugs and having these conversations. I done been on the, on the, on the, on the, on the whole stroll talking to sisters who are selling they, you know what I mean? Doing their thing and having these conversations to get them to come to the mosque and, and our people, man, you know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said the hardest job ever is to try to save black people. I done been with brothers who have begged me, hey, man, I want to be a Muslim, but I got a problem. I do cocaine. And I'm like, man, I, 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 and then I would tell them, listen, I just want you to come out to the miles. We're not here to judge. You come as you are. You don't get right, then come to God. You come to God to get right. And that got his attention. I said, if we didn't need God, if, if all of us was right, we wouldn't even be in the house of God. So he came and one time, man, he was doing, <laughs> he started doing it in the mosque, man, on the west side. Uh, when, the wow. mosque was, when the mosque was closed because he wanted to be around us. So it would be times when we would be holding the mosque down 24 hours on the west side. And he came and was doing it, man. And I, and I, and I, and I wasn't careful with him. I went off on him. And I scared that brother so bad. That man ran about that mosque and I, I ain't seen him to this day, man. But, uh, even being patient with a person while they are suffering, while they're going through what they're going through, it takes a mighty, mighty, mighty understanding of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to do what the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan says. He said, if you touch the God right in a person, you got to touch it right now. You can't just touch it. Right. You got to touch right. the God in a person right. Then you can pull that God out of them. And then when you connect with that God, and them with the God in you is no longer you doing the work. That's Allah taking over. He just used you as the catalyst to bring them to the Lamb of God. And so this is one of the things that I've learned with Dylan. And that patience came to me from distributing the Final Call newspaper. Now, I have an 80% success rate where 80% of the people, probably it's probably more than that now, 80 to 85, 90% 90 of the people say yes. Brother say 96%, and he processed it. <laughs> yes, sir. Because <laughs> he came right into the training. Well, we don't, we're not out here selling papers. We out here saving lives. I asked the brother, how many papers you gonna sell today? And he say, I don't sell papers, I save lives. The processing brother. I said, You got yes, it sir. right. You got Yo, the right man. mentality. And so the final call newspaper for everything that can plague us in the black community. The seed of the solution is right. Here, you want to talk about economics, you want to talk about farmland, you want to talk about um spiritual elevation, you want to talk about uh, what, what's, what's that the topics that they modern, modern, what's the what's the topic that every news talk about, man? It's all the current events, current, current events. events. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get your current events from the media, you do want to watch the news, but then you want to cross reference it with something that got a spiritual element to it. Right. This, and that's what makes me successful with the Final Call newspaper. A lot of people have the, the impression that this is a Muslim paper. I'm a Christian. I don't want, I don't want that. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Christians, Christians need to be educated too. Facts. This is a message that, this is a message dedicated to the resurrection of the black man and woman in America and the world. If, I, if you thought this, you, it's going to be kind of hard to find just straight Islam in here. If you want Islam, we, we, I got a lecture for you. Or you can come to the mosque. But this right here, did you know that there's a natural way to fight off sickness and disease? Page 28. See? See? Health is, we number one in heart disease. We number one in diabetes. So when people listening to that, they in the car probably with diabetes as I'm talking to them. Did you know that there's a natural way to fight off sickness and disease? We got something to help you wean yourself off of some of those medications on page 28. Coronavirus. Listen, don't take, don't, 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 don't take the, don't take the vaccine. And here's why. See, right. we, we, we got to educate our people. And that's what I'm doing out there. If I'm, I'm not saying this, listen, in the name of Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, alhamdulillah, with the final call. I'm not talking to them like that. I'm right. speaking their language. 
Right. And, and their language is, I need help. Their language is, I need solutions. Their language is, I'm sick and I need a cure. Their language is, I have a problem and I need a solution. And those C's is in the Final Call newspaper. So if we can articulate, listen, this is going to help you. That's what make me successful, not selling papers. It, 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 I, and I stuck to this and I stuck to distributing the Final Call newspaper. And as long as I'm live, long as I'm living, Brother Khalil checked out 80 plus years, bro. And I was with I was with him some of them years out there with the Final Call newspaper because he said this is his way of devotion. Right. And he's, if you're talking about dying on your post, Brother Khalil died on his post. And now with the ABS tribe and digital real estate, I get to go out now because now we got modern technology. So right. I'm not going to stop distributing the Final Call newspaper. So in conclusion, I went from a brother that used to stutter, was very fearful of rejection, to now having so much confidence that I believe, man, listen, Chinese people get the paper from me. Jehovah Witness get the paper from me. White racist people. A white racist man came up on his bike with his Confederate flag, the, the whole ZZ top beard, the bandana, and all of that. And by the time I got done talking, this white man said, you talk a good one. I'm going to give you this $2, but I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> But that was it, brother Troy. Thank you, man. I, I, I'm just, man, I'm so excited just listening to you. You got me on a tangent right now. Go ahead. Man, bro. I love it, brother. And look, you you saying stuff so smooth, man. But if anybody has had ever had any interaction with a Jehovah Witness, I, I had to I had to do some slick stuff and and really, really do it like some maneuvering where I had to exchange. <laughs> What they have for, for us to get a to get a Jehovah Witness to take a final call, you you That's doing something, man. Very <laughs> difficult. That is they ooh, they don't they don't play with it. The whole problem is they think like the Christian think. And hey, listen, we got our beliefs and you have yours. But I look around for something, man, and I see uh, you got the local newspaper in your car. You see what I'm saying? Or I right, look around right. and I might see a template. I say, hey, listen. What what's the difference from getting educated from this standpoint, from a pure divine standpoint, as opposed to going to the local newspaper? What's the difference? And so it's, it's just it's just different things that I would say to make them have to sit down and say, "Well, man, what what what? I'm, I'm a Jehovah Witness." I said, "I'm one too. I witness for Jehovah too." I, I go, down, but but this ain't about religion. Look 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 right here, and I open up page twenty eight. Do you agree? That eating hog is not good for you. And yeah, we agree. But but look what look what. I'm doing. Let me turn to another page. Let me just open up. Let me just do it right now. This is what I do to them. I'm gonna just open up to anything, and I just say, "Here go one right here. Look, look, look." Blacks often wait for the dominant party to select someone for us to vote and support. What they gotta do with religion? Right, right. You see what I'm saying? And I be, they, yep. they be like, I say, don't buy the Muslim. Listen, we. Just gonna give it to you without all the lies, without all the trickery, without all the deceit. And then when that conversation is over, with they like, man, listen, give me the paper, man. Give me the paper. Ooh, I, man, I, I don't talk I about religion, it. man. You believe how you believe, but let, our people right. are suffering, and these people don't care what you believe in. Our people are dying. Man, I wish I'd have been with you when you did that, man. I had to, I had to commit to reading every single book that they would bring me for a month. <laughs> To get them to read one final call. And I don't think they even read it. <laughs> mm. You had them asking for it, man. I love it. Man, you definitely, man, have been able to provide some valuable skills. And you just mentioned something that I definitely want to make sure we talk about this, this new modern technology, right? And for you to be excited and a part of digital real estate and see how it connects to the mission. And so of course, shout out, you know, more than just a shout out, but brother Ben X, brother Ben Muhammad, and the, the team he has brought together, man. I mean, I'm hearing and seeing that some are Christian, some may not have a religion in their title, but I'm not seeing that in their actions, in their words. <laughs> It, I'm seeing a unified effort 
understanding the plight of our people and understanding what it's going to take to help get us all in a better financial situation so we can focus on the more important stuff in terms of spirituality and, you know, um, working together to build something for the future, tangible stuff, land, and, and, and everything that that involves. So talk a little bit about digital real estate and the ABS tribe because, again, I got in and was learning a few things and applying it and making some money uh, a bit better and easier than I was, but I really wasn't paying attention to it like I should. And you was doing things that made me say, wait a minute, I know it's valuable, but I'm missing something here. <laughs> The tribe, the coaching part, man. Someone to help walk you through stuff. So talk a little bit about it. So I, I was I'm known for being a skeptic first. <laughs> that's my <laughs> reputation. Um and and that's because, Brother Tori, you and I both know there's been so many seminars, so many multi-level marketing groups, so many organizations and and the time we living in, COVID hit me real hard, man. It shot down my whole operation. Mm -hmm. And now I know it takes money to make money, but if I'm going to invest some money in something, I got to have very, very, like, close to zero risk of losing it all. Well, joining the ABS tribe in digital real estate, there's no losses. It's not, it's not that type of investment. This is a, a classroom. Well, you getting taught, you're being coached, and you've been given tools and an online curriculum that show you these multiple, multiple ways to make money online. Like, it's multiple ways. And thanks to COVID-19, Young Con the Don put it best. We are literally LOL, living online. So after being a skeptic, what got my attention out of all of the... Um, edification of Brother Ben, it is impressive that Brother Ben makes six figures a month. It is impressive that Forbes mention our brother. It is impressive that Yahoo Finance mentions our brothers, including Brother Jake Taylor Jacobs. It is impressive that Brother Ben got acknowledged by all people, Fox Business, Fox Business. And they said he adds a spiritual element to his training. So what got my attention in the conversation with Brother Damon, a.k.a. Young Kind of Don, is he said, Brother Hashim, he came right up in my straight path. He said, you just got acknowledged for being the number one final call salesman to save his day. And you've been doing you, but Brother Ben distribute 8,000 digital final call subscriptions every month. I, I did pause. 8,000. And, and I'm saying how? No. How? How is it even possible? He said, we talking digital now. Digital is the click of a button. Right. And he, he didn't give me all the ins and outs. And then I got into it and Brother Ben did it real time. Real time. And uh, and I just, if, if this is, if anybody out there watching, we taught in Problem 31 that now with modern technology, the lion is out of the cage walking 50 paces faster. What is the modern technology? We're talking on one right now, a cell phone and a computer combined. Who is the lion that's out of the cage? You and I. What is 50 paces faster? Let me tell you what 50 paces faster is for me. Now I wake up to money. Now I, I, I made $1,600 in six hours. That, that Unless I'm you know in the streets doing something I shouldn't be doing. I'm not used to making that kind of money. Um, I made a small investment. Now I'm at $13,000 just with the Learn Why You Earn program he got. But I've doubled that with my products and learning what digital real estate is in the ABS tribe. So that's I saw the correlation <coughs> with modern technology, the lying out the cage walking 50 paces faster, I went from zero money thanks to COVID-19 to making down payments on houses and and, and get, man, paying off credit cards and all. It's just crazy. 
Like, I'm not all the way straight yet. I'm not all the way financially stable. But now I can see how he makes six figures a month. So for those of you that are listening, there was a time when there was paper food stamps. Now it's the EBT card, digital. When we were young, when we was little, our parents or our uncle, somebody had where the dashboard, a little record player would come out. They played 45s. Mm -hmm. Then it went to an A-track cassette tape. Then it went to a cassette tape. Then it went to a CD. And now we live in the digital download era. Let me tell you what 50 paces faster means. There's a sister by the name of Michi X, who in her first week, never been in the studio before, never did an album. So with my expertise and her talent, we put together a project. And because of her reach on social media, with a digital download, 500 people in her first week Bought her album at 1999. This sister, with no experience in the studio, performed on stage probably three times in her life, made ten thousand dollars in her first week with a digital <laughs> with a digital download. No, so no middleman, no no rec, no title, no iTunes, straight to her website. Tools that we learned that we are being taught in the digital real estate. Go ahead, man. So this is it's, it's something like that blows me away. I've been hearing some stories, never heard that one you just shared. And what is so exciting to me is that with all the accolades you just talked about, what Brother Ben has done, it takes a very special individual to not only know how, but have the the the, the intention, the desire to show other people how to do what he did. Brother could have rolled off in the sunset <laughs> and just sat down, you know, and enjoyed the fruits of his own labor. But man, to be able to turn back around and say, no, let me show other people how to do what I just did. Man, I, I love him and I love what he's doing. And every moment that I've been on a call, that I've been in the Zoom, it's bringing together a group of folks Man, who are supporting, loving, and appreciating each other and learning together to do in his space. And the other thing that is so amazing to me is that you're not just going to learn how to, although this is important, to resell what his products, which I, that's, in, that's in so important to have that learn while you earn, but you also are learning how you become your own brand and your own product so that you, can, you you now you can sell your product and his products, right? A lot of places like you making stuff, you just, you sell their stuff and you know, you just, that's what you're doing. That's the key thing. That's, that's the key thing about the ABS tribe and digital real estate. It's really about you. You are the yeah. product and those that are listening, you don't have some ideas. You done thought of some things that if you were to follow through on, you could have made a fortune by now. For example, I've been trying to write a children's book since 2007. <clears throat> but not until the ABS Tribe and Digital Real Estate that I finished the book. So in the ABS Tribe, they got everything you need to make a business from A to Z, from your tax person to your website to your logos to branding, to expanding your reach on social media, everything you need to make money online. And it's easier because now you ain't got to pay rent at brick and mortar building. Now, you you know what I mean? So yeah, everything you need from LLCs, we got it. Logos, we got it. Websites, we got it. And we'll take your idea. He'll show you, him and Jake Taylor Jacobs will show you what you're born to do. If you don't know what you're born to do, you're going to learn what you're born to do because everything that we've been given as gifts from the almighty is a gift that if we would expound upon our gift, master our gift, master our craft, that gift that the most high gave to us is for us to make a living and be able to provide for our families with. Foxes got holes. <coughs> they say birds have nests, but the son of man only got a place to lay his head. Why don't you have a place to lay your head? 
Why are we in poverty? Why, why, why are we struggling paying our bills? Why are we in debt? Because we learn how to make money from our open enemy. We learn how to make money from our oppressors. What Brother Ben has got and what he has put together and what Jake Taylor has put together is directly from God Almighty himself. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that for every problem we can face as a people, Allah would raise up one from amongst us with the solution. And I second Brother Damon, a.k.a. Young Conda Don, that Brother Ben X is the master for Muhammad of the Internet. I second that. Because now <laughs> I've learned things in the classroom and with the tools that I've learned in the classroom, I now have clients. That's See, I ain't factoring in that money that I'm making. I now have clients with something I don't learn in the ABS trial. So it's a school. I asked Brother Ben early on in my development, because I've only been in the class like four months. I said, I'm a, I want to just a progress report. How am I doing? Uh, he said, all oh, praise you do to Allah. The main thing you need to do is take these tools that you're learning and be able to do them for yourself and explain them to other people. So that's what I do. I go into the classroom. Once I learn something, I know how to do it. Then I got to be able to articulate it to somebody else. And that just that one gift, learning something, then articulating it, goes back to what you were talking about earlier. Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad, now Grandmaster Aziz Double Z, he said in a righteous competition with Brother Yahya Jabril, I don't know if you remember this, Brother Tori, me and Brother Yahya Jabril had a competition on who could sell the most final calls in one day. We did it on a Monday. We started at the wee hours in the morning all the way to FOI class, and I think I edged Brother, Tor Brother, Brother Yahya by about 10 papers. That's how close he was. Um, and after the FOI went off, fruit, hot oh, they was clapping. Grandmaster brought us to the front and he did me like this. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said it's good that you're able to do that, but what is better if you could teach others how to do that. And, and that was the beginning of the path one. That was my first book. Yes, sir. And, um, that you helped me put together. Um, and that's that that kind of helped me develop and define a little more what I'm put here to do. That's what Brother Ben has done. He he, like you said, he could have ran off into the sunset with these tools. He made six figures a month. And he could, but no, he said, you know what? I want for my brother what I want for myself. I want for myself. So now he's teaching thousands of students and 85% is lost founds in the classroom on clubhouse app i'm scrolling through the participants while he playing the minister minister i'm scrolling through the participants 85 percent listening to the minister lost found. i'm watching brother ben and man everything ties up to our teaching out of technology we literally have a virtual mosque on clubhouse yes sir a virtual mosque and i'm listening to the, I'm, I'm listening to the testimonies of Christians now understanding. I heard a Christian brother Greg took the name. Now I know why the minister used the Bible now. I know why he used Christianity now. He, he very near correct. He said, because our people, most of our people is Christian, so he know how to talk to them. He didn't know how to speak to them. A Christian articulated that. Or was he, I don't know, I think he might have not, he might, might have been a Muslim, but a Sunni Muslim, or whatever he was. It wasn't in the nation. He was saying, I get it now. Brother Ben teaching on so many levels and bring his people together on so many levels. But the main thing that resonates with me with digital real estate, I always wanted to see my people unite. And anybody that got a gift to bring people from all different backgrounds, we talk. My master father Muhammad, that we're going to have friendships in our walks of life. We taught that. And Brother Ben got the only witnesses in the class. He realized people that gave up on God, people joined in the nation. People understand Islam now. Sunni Muslims debating with us and the way we handle them. They got to submit. Yeah. There's so much going on. The sound, your that's sound is messing up a little bit. Say it again. Your sound is messing up a little bit. So I thought George was messing up. But it's mine. 
<laughs> is, my, is my sound messed up? Yep, you can hear me well. Well, the problem is, I'm telling the truth. That's the problem. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Man, so I put a link in there if anybody wants to check out the ABS tribe. Man, and I, I, this was really the main purpose, man. I wanted to bring you on, but we couldn't, we got so much to talk about, man. We had to talk about uh, the preliminary stuff. And I'm glad you mentioned the clubhouse. It's been an incredible tool um, to use, man. And I know he encouraged us, brother Ben, to get on there and stop playing around with it. And my, is my sound messed up too? It is. All right, well, let's, let's do this. We're going we gonna to read that. I am so loving this interview and how humble it is. Been so informative. Man, Mr. Jel Jelana, praise you to a lot. Thank you uh, for tuning in. But what I'm going to do is, because the sound is messing up, I'm going to go to a couple of our sponsors and supporters. And, man, you, man you're more than welcome to keep coming on the show anytime you want to. We appreciate you. Man, we love you, and we thank you for being a brother. And, um, man, I, I, I thank a lot to be a part of this brotherhood of the Nation of Islam with you. I want to say thank you. I want to thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, man, for, for just being who he is, man. We talk about somebody who accepted their own and be they served. That's Mr. Farrakhan. He defined it. I want to thank you, man, for, for saving me personally, man, for I got, I got on my back probably one of the worst crimes you could put on a man, but because of his, his way of his loving way, his merciful way, he defines Vice Jerry or Khalifa. He defines that and representing God. Minister Farrakhan, how you gonna represent God? Think about that, man. Somebody who represents God, the Creator. I've never seen a human being. Minister Farrakhan. I wasn't fortunate enough to live prior to 75 to see the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, but I've seen him in Minister Farrakhan. I wasn't fortunate enough to be taught by Master Father Muhammad, like, like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, but I've been taught through, by Master Father Muhammad through the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He encompasses all three, and his example, just think over that, man. He represents God. I am God's representative. And he represents, he represents it through his action. He can say it out of his mouth. We can say it for him. But you can combine all pastors on the earth, all religious people on the earth. And if you throw the, they throw their rod, the minister throw his rod, we're going to swallow it right up. And that's why I want to thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because of his representation and his perfected, his mature way of representing God. That's why I want to thank Brother Ben X, who is a, is a good representation of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He just modern technology. And I had to get on in the classroom with Brother Ben X. Well, I don't see Brother Ben X as just a, uh, a young 26-year-old brother. I see him as a young God, Brother Ben X. And, and, and I, want to be, I want to be in that line. I want to be right on down to modern time, quick thinking, fast moving, right down to modern technology. And you too, Brother it's very difficult, man, to teach or try to post some over somebody who is wise as you. Somebody is wise as you. It's kind of hard to pull a wool over our eyes. We don't have a problem saying no. But for you to see the beauty in digital real estate, maybe a trap says a lot about you because some people ain't getting with Brother Ben X just because it's him. Some people not getting in the classroom just because he's 26 years old. What a fool. This person to not understand that children are the future, not understand that our future is in the youth, to not hear out of Minnesota Louis Farrakhan and say this is the greatest generation that we have ever raised. That's right. Young, I got a young one next to me right now. He's not, he not young because he's under my tools. He's young getting tools because he's going to leave. He's leaving right now. So I want to thank Brother Ben next, Jake Taylor Jacob, these young brothers who have taken their gifts and talents and put it in a curriculum. Our online curriculum to where we can go at our own pace and be taught and coached by him personally. I want to thank him for that. That's a lot of humility and 
So for those of us who are interested in the ABS tribe and learning more about digital real estate, I want y'all to get with this brother right here. <laughs> but I want y'all to get with this brother right here. And I'll close with what the Supreme Captain said. Brother Mustafa said, what is wrong with us not wanting to learn from one another? Right. Think over that. Thank you. Think over that. Man, thank you, brother. Man, I think about the minister said one day that if we hear truth coming from a parrot, we should bear witness to the truth. Now, if we should bear witness to words coming out of a bird, how could we not submit to God coming out of one of our brothers? <laughs> how could we not? <laughs> this man is a master. And you talking about I'm, I've been listening to him. He at least 10 years in the game. So, man, he's been put in the work. He done, he's mastered and packed the focus and energy that most of us, many of us, have not had our entire life. So, man, I submit to the God that I see coming out of him. And I'm striving, like you, to line myself up with the God I see in my brother. <laughs> So we're gonna close out. We're gonna bring it to the, you know, show our sponsors and our supporters. Man, we got some great people that's helping to keep the show going. Man, we thank Sister Sh Shaia for poking on. I see she already made me a tribe. And I love you and appreciate you. Her name is Sister Shayna. Sister Shayna, Sister Shayna X Royal. We see it, we see it. All right, check out, check out, man. I got one of your favorite people, man. We about to show in a second here. Hold on. Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream is the oh only God. place to go when the ladies crave delicious, old-fashioned homemade ice cream. Their vanilla tastes just like Grandma used to make it. With over 35 flavors, all made with the freshest ingredients, Kathy has never had banana pudding ice cream this good. It's homemade ice cream the way you remember, and Sean Michelle's doesn't upset your stomach. Enjoy in store, take it to go. Sean Michelle's, fall in love again. First time customers, buy one, get one free. Man, so shout out to our people, man. Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream. Keeping this show popping and going. We appreciate them. We encourage everybody who's tuned in, man. Support Black-owned businesses. These are a few people who uh, help us keep the show going. Dan Soul Food, Brown Sugar Bakery. Of course, these are some Black-owned establishments in Chicago. But then if you got a Muslim business, you a Muslim, go to the Black Muslim Directory and find a ton of Black-owned businesses. Shout out to Sissy's Taco Bar. She's even doing tamales now. Hold on now, tamales, man, come on. And um, man, we appreciate Brother Willie. Brother Willie with uh, My J Motors out there in Indiana, Indiana, not too far from Chicago. So man, we appreciate and love all our supporters, our sponsors. Get, get that link, check out the digital real estate, the ABS tribe, man, and learn so much about how you can build your business. I'm gonna be there with you. Right. If you need some help along the way, I, I can I'm assist you, man, making sure that you navigate and learn everything you need to learn and be the best you and to build your business. So, man, we're going to end with that. We thank you all for tuning in and um, assalamu alaikum.